Brando Chambly of the Golf Channel. Golf Channel has more than 80 hours of uh, wraparound news coverage this week. Part of it's live from the Masters news programming. You can see him with Frank Nobolo. Uh, you know, there's a cast of characters there, and uh, he joins us now. Hi, Brando. How are you this morning? I'm, I'm great, Dan, and you're right. I didn't know which way to look yesterday. I had all the TVs going, and computers going, and iPads. It's like, good gracious. It was since it's overload, but it, uh, at the end of the day, it was certainly a hell, of a, a hell of a day, wasn't it? Yes, it was. And usually it's the course that's the star, but Jordan Spieth was going into very, very rare, rarefied air there that the 64, 62 would have been uh, the course record. What, what makes Jordan Spieth great? No situation bothers him. You know, you put him in, uh, in Japan playing with Hideki Matsuyama or Australia with Adam Scott or Tiger Woods, wherever. And he's uh, he's completely unfluttered. You know, if you remember, Phil Mickelson didn't play particularly well with Tiger Woods yeah. until after Butch Harmon gave Phil Mickelson the keys. He said, look, Tiger's going to do this. Tiger's going to do this. If you take a veteran who struggles at Phil's level in Tiger's company, um, you'd understand it. Everybody does. But, uh, but not Jordan. He comes along, and he's got this perfect demeanor for golf. Um, I don't, you know, that, that in and of itself, the origin of that demeanor is harder to figure out. It's pretty clear to see that he's got it. Um, and I think you'd have to go back to Tiger Woods or Seve or Jack Nicholas to find a 20 year old who could handle themselves like that. Would you rather have Jordan Spee's future or Rory's? <laughs> That's a great question. Rory's, uh, because Rory's got, uh, that was a quick answer there, Randall. <laughs> well, th- there's a couple things there. You know, since 2000, the game has changed so much. Uh, there's only been two players in multiple major championships since 2000 that are middle distance players. Uh, Martin Keimer uh, is, uh, is is certainly one of them. Padraig Harrington, and that's it. Everybody else that's won multiple majors, um, going back all the way to 1997 uh, for the most part, but certainly since 2000, has had great distance. And, and Jordan Spieth doesn't have, which makes what he's doing even harder to figure out. He's a, he's, his club head speed is about 100th on the PGA Tour, and he's about 60th or 70th on distance because he maxes out his trajectories and spin angles and spin, spin rates and whatnot. But since 1997, only four players have won the Masters outside the top 12 in driving distance. And those became, came about because of, of weather conditions that made it almost impossible for the long hitters to get to 13 and 15 and Northwest wind into their face. So, you know, distance has become such a big deal in the game, and you just can't ignore it. And he doesn't have great distance, and yet he's playing against these guys and beating them. Age was a big deal when Jack won it at 46. Why isn't an age a big deal now with Ernie Els and Phil Mickelson in contention? I think it still is. You know, if, if you start to look at uh, the diminishing odds of winning a major championship. Yeah, but you had Tom eight, Watson eight, do what he did, Brando. I mean, he <laughs> the oldest guy ever to break par in a major, right? Well, Tommy Aaron, you're right. But Tommy Aaron made the cut at the Masters when he was 63. Gene Sarazen made the cut there when he was 62. Uh, Sam Snead finished third in a major when he was 62. Jack finished eighth at the Masters when he was 58. Uh, there is no place that treats the elderly better than Augusta <laughs> National. No place. Um, that, you know, it, it's like the civilian walking the old lady across the street for golf courses. Uh, you know, what they can do with sort of guile to find their way around that golf course. Um, and, and, you know, they've got all those great memories, but they can do it with guile. Now, since it's gotten so much longer, uh, what Tom Watson did yesterday uh, makes it even harder to figure out. But, Tom Watson's sort of idle when he was a kid with Sam Snead, and Sam Snead's uh, thought process was about turn and length of swing and rhythm. And if you watch Tom Watson from the time he was contending there in his early 20s or mid-20s to now, his swing hasn't hardly shortened up at all. Long swing, long career, uh, and he's got that long swing. All right, Tiger. Um, we thought <laughs> maybe the short game was going to be the issue. Uh, why, why is his driver... Long irons just not where they should be. You know, as he's gotten bigger, his swing has gotten shorter or flatter, and as it's gotten flatter, it's gotten shorter. Um, so his swing is much, much shorter than it used to be. His change of direction is very, very quick, and a lot of that has to do with the fact that he drops down so much, both in his back swing and in his down swing. So you have to make up for for that space somewhere. So what does he do? He jumps up out of the ball. This is sort of an epidemic in teaching these days. They're telling everybody you got to 
use the ground, which is a ridiculous term to me, that you got to drop down and then jump up. Uh, you know, Tiger Woods averaged 340 yards off the tee in 1996. He was the longest by 40 yards. That's when Jack Nicholson and Greg, or Jack Nicholas and Arnold Palmer said he was going to win more Masters than them. Eleven, they were predicting. Eleven, at least, minimum. <laughs> Uh, that's because he was 40 yards longer than everybody. And in 1997, when he won by 12, he averaged 323 off the tee. He was 23 yards longer than the second longest guy. And he's traded speed for strength. And why? I have no idea. I'm sure he looks good on the beach. Um, and so do all these other players. All these other players are in mass imitating Tiger Woods and going to the gym. And uh, and I think that they're uh, they're putting their career, their length of their career at risk. He's Brandel Chambly, Golf Channel. You can see him with Rich Lerner, Frank Nabilo. They got uh, the Masters covered before and after on the Golf Channel. Joining us, Dan Patrick Show. Um, when have you ever tried on a green jacket? <laughs> no, I haven't. <laughs> I would like to though. You? Well, <laughs> mm, may, maybe, maybe, <laughs> maybe a guy I know has. Yeah, yeah. I bet I know that guy. Yeah, his name is Pan Datrick, and he uh, yes. he, he tried it on. So okay. no, so nobody sure. you know has ever said, "Hey, do you want to try?" Is it like the Stanley Cup that you're not allowed to hold it unless you've won it? Well, the only place that they're allowed to take it—I mean, only the winner can take his jacket off the property. Uh, so it's only the winner that can even get the jacket off the property, and so that's the only place you would run into somebody. If I was at Phil's house one night. <laughs> In the year that he won the Masters, only that year. So the only other time you'd ever get to try on a jacket is you have to be walking around the grounds and some member said, hey, you want to try on my jacket? Or if I said, hey, hey, can I try that jacket on? And uh, I don't care how good of friends we are. Um, if Jeremy Payne saw him, I think that'd be it for him and me. And uh, I don't think any member's going to risk that. I got to admit, I, I ate in the clubhouse yesterday. And, I, you know, when those guys walk by in the green jackets, there, there, there's an... There's some jealousy on my part. There really is. Because if there's one club I'd like to, more than anything, I'd like to be able to take my buddies there. I think that would be a blast, you know, to treat your friends to yeah. that place. Yeah. Um, you know, I haven't played it that much, um, but it's, uh, it's a special place. Do you do a Jim Nance impersonation? <laughs> I do not. You do? Can't. You can't? I, no, heck no, I don't. But but I, you know, the Hello Friends thing is, is beautiful. I saw him in the clubhouse yesterday, and he comes by. And Jim knows. Jim knows everything about every sport, everything about every person. He comes by and, and he says, hey, I just read your article. And I said, I was thinking, Jim, you're a busy man. You just finished <laughs> basketball. you got a lot of other things you need to be reading besides mine. But the thing is, he reads everything. Uh, he's a sweetheart of a guy. He really has. He's, uh, he's been a gem of a, a human being to know over the last 20 years. Uh, before I let you go, the headline on Monday with Augusta will be? The headline on Monday? Yep. It will it will be uh Jason Day prevails, more than likely. Something along those lines. Um Jason Day, you know, not I mean look, short <laughs> what Jordan Speed did was uh, unbelievable. Uh but there's a reason only three players have uh have won the Masters after leading the first round going back to nineteen eighty. Uh the pressure of leading and the inevitability of, of what you're doing and the nerves it takes to do it. It's just if Jordan does it then all of a sudden we're going to be talking about him even at a higher level than we were talking about Rory. Um, because Rory, when he was 20, also shot 63. Well, okay, even one better, 63 in the Open Championship. But he followed it with an 80. Um, you know, and, and that's not that Jordan's going to shoot 80 today by any stretch of the imagination. But the likelihood that he'll continue this all the way through, history says he won't. But Jason Day, he's... Uh, he seems to be hitting on all cylinders. He leads the tour in the all-around statistics. There's a reason he does. He's not missing a thing. Good to visit with you. Tell uh, Rich Lerner and Frank Nablo we said hello and have fun today. I will do. Always nice to talk to you, Dan. Take Thank care. you, Randall. That's uh, Randall Chambly.